call this meeting of the U.S. and Foreign Minister and Board of Education to order. Please rise and join me in saluting the flag. to approve the agenda. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented with the following amendments. One, additional certified classified personal actions for consideration, item E-3. Two, move item F-1, curriculum report, activity section amendment to the item G-2, unfinished business, and edit as follows. Consider revisions to COVID-19 response plan to include athletics and activities. Classroom operational levels, health services, special education, and personnel. Three, move item G1, unfinished business, discussion of the 2021 district budget to item G-3. Four, add item G-1, unfinished business, executive order 20-59. Five, add item G-4, unfinished business, discussion of board meeting, date schedule, and September 10 will be approved. I have a motion to approve the agenda with amendments. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jennifer. Any discussion? I do have a question. On the additional certified and classified personnel actions, does that include the addendum to certified personnel with the extra days that were that are being requested? Yes. So my question with that then is I see that a number of different um, admin are asking for extra days, contract days, and in the information that you sent us, that comes with additional pay for those extra days. But I've not seen any addis additional days requested for teachers that may be having to do extra work as they transfer to different like online methods or com like complete different grades. Is that gonna come or? Uh, so as a result of the calendar change that was made, uh, our 205 day employees, which includes secretaries, sysops, and elementary principals, they started their their contract days on July 27th. 27th. Um, and so if we want them to uh, to report to work and be under contract during those times, this those, those additional five days basically provides for that. Um, teachers in their contracts will have that there will be no expectation for them to report to work during those additional days in that gap, um, or to have to do any work during that time. But those groups of employees that I mentioned earlier will will be required to report to work. So that's why they're being, uh, their calendar is being adjusted. So do you think that, that it's adequate time to expect teachers to make such huge transitions without additional days? Well, that's why we, we built in the four additional professional development days um, and, uh, and adjusted the calendar to allow that to happen before school starts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, did you have a question? Okay. Um, since we've got two people- No, I didn't. Madam Chair. Thank you, I saw your I note. Since we have two people appearing by Zoom, um, we'll do a roll call vote um, for the votes today. Um, is that all right? I'm assuming that's better for you, Stephanie. Yes, it's fine. Okay. Laura? Aye. Um, uh, hold. When you guys are talking, could you make sure you like speak writing here? Can you hear me okay now? I can hear you, but I can't hear Dana and I can't hear Steve. Okay. Did you need the question and the answer repeated? I'm sorry, but yes, please. Okay. Um, Dana, would you mind repeating your question? Can you hear me, Janine? Is that better? Do you want to just ask it then? They can hear you. 
Um, just to, can you still hear me? To summarize, I believe the question was with regard to the additional contract days for the class, classified, right? 205 days. Yeah, the two, um, and adding pay to them to um, increase their contract time from 205 to basically 210, if I'm understanding correctly. And then, um, Dr. Carlin, do you want to explain your answer? Yeah, and Janine and Mark, can you hear me? So, I'm getting one yes and one no. <laughs> Let me come over to the other microphone. Did I summarize it correctly for you, Dana? Yeah, I just asked why, if any teachers were gonna get additional pay for the additional time that might be necessary for, because some of them are having pretty big transition time, so that was my question. So can you hear me, is this better? Very good. <laughs> so the, um, the 205 day calendar employees uh, are made up of sysops, uh, building secretaries and elementary principals are the primary group of 205 day employees. With the change we made in our calendar, in order to have them on duty a week after school ends in the spring, uh, we need to add five extra days we, because we started them on the 27th of July when they would have normally started. Our alternative would be to send them home for five days and to have a gap. Uh, we really have a lot for them to do in getting school ready. Uh, Dana had asked about teachers. Uh, this doesn't impact the teacher's contract. It's still the same number of days that we have contractually agreed to with teachers. Um, there is a gap for teachers during that time, but unlike the 205 day employees, the teachers will not be expected to report to work um, during those days, those will be non-duty days in their contract. Stephanie, do you want to, are there any other questions with regard to the consent or to approving the agenda? Okay, Stephanie, do you want to restart the roll call? Laura? Aye. Dr. Hannigan? Aye. Dana? Aye. Janine? Aye. Mark? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Alex? Aye. Okay, I'm not aware of any delegations, questions and answers, or public comments or recognitions at this time. Is there something I'm missing? No. Thank you. Any correspondence, Stephanie? No. Thank you. Um, at this time, I would approve or ex would like a motion to approve the consent agenda. There we go. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mark. Any discussion? Okay. Stephanie? Laura? Aye. Dr. Hannigan? Aye. Dana? Aye. Janine? Aye. Mark? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Alex? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, the consent agenda has been approved. Um, curriculum reports, um, the COVID-19 communications plan, Dr. Carlin, are you starting this or Mr. Cessna? Uh, Mr. Cessna is going to start this. We probably need to do a check and make sure that our remote board members are going to be able to hear. Right. Mark and Janine, can you hear me okay? I'm going with a no. Can you hear me now? No. Can anybody hear? Yes, Mark. Mark's shaking his head. Janine, can you hear me? <coughs> Can the board hear me? Barely. Barely, okay. I can move to the mic. Where's the other mic? Please. Looks like a radio mic here. Yeah. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh. That's much better. All right. Uh, Madam Chair and Board of Education members, we come to you tonight to provide information on the start of the 2020-2021 school year. This is a different start to the school year with the community and state still feeling the effects of the COVID-19 virus. The board approved the 2020-2021 reopening plan, which is Act 457 Strong, a vision for growth, success, and safety for all as it's July, at its July 30th meeting. The board also approved the start of the school year on Monday, August 31st of this year with the approval of the 2020-2021 school calendar. Our team has begun the campaign to communicate the start of the school year. As you notice, the school calendar to promote the start of the school year was on the website, social media, and went out to the news media as well. The reason um, was is because we've moved the date a number of times, but we finally got a date, and that is August 31st of this year. The team put a calendar together to get started for the school year. We have district level communications going out to the community on the plan to start school. There's also a building level communications that's going on to parents specific to each of the buildings, as you can see on the slide. We'll have an item on Tuesday talking about Technology Weekly because technology will be a big factor in educating our students due to the various options and how we will be educating our students, especially this school year. We'll be speaking with directors from departments on Wednesdays on what they are doing and following the reopening plan to start the school year safe for all students and staff. We'll also be sending out weekly reminders to families about registering for the various learning options. We also do have a frequently, uh, a frequently asked questions page on the website where we direct families to go on answering frequently asked questions about the plan as well as the start of the school year, which you see on the screen. Going back, we've been communicating the options to the community on the opening of the school year, which is on-site, remote, and blended. We've put that information out on the website, social media, and as well as out to the news media. We've also been and um, have communicated on how the 2020-2021 remote learning option will be different from our continuous learning that everyone experienced last uh, spring when the schools were closed across the state. And we've been doing that in multiple languages for everybody's sake, as you see on the screen. Again, we've also got a video put together. We cannot wait to welcome our students back to school this fall. We have planned out this year to allow for possible shifts between on-site and remote learning, depending on our local COVID-19 infection rates. If Garden City can keep COVID-19 infections low, we can have traditional on-site classes five days a week following guidelines from the City County Health Department. But if Garden City's COVID-19 infection rate starts to increase, then we are prepared to switch to a more hybrid learning experience. Students would then learn with a mix of remote learning from home and on-site at school. However, if local health officials say that COVID infections have increased too much, students could then switch to a 100% remote learning model. At that time, all classes will be taught virtually and students will resume a normal five-day week schedule, all while learning at home. We understand that some families may not feel comfortable sending or be able to send their children back to school in person for the coming year. For those families, we have a full-time remote learning option. Students will remain connected with a local school and have the opportunity to return to on-site learning after semester break. Blended learning is also available for some of our 7th through 12th grade students. Students would be enrolled in remote learning classes along with some on-site classes. This option is only available for grades 7 through 12. Also, any 6th grade remote learning student who is interested in band or orchestra can sign up to take that class on site. For up-to-date information or to see our list of frequently asked questions, visit Garden City Public Schools online at www.gckschools.com. We are excited about the upcoming school year and can't wait to see you. Stay safe and be well. Now we will be communicating out to the community on August 25th 
the level the district will start at from the plan that you approved. There are six levels that we will follow in the plan that was approved by the board again. We will communicate that by website, social media, news media, as well as Skyler, which goes out to all family members. School starts Monday, August 31st, with a half-day orientation for elementary, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 10th grade students, and all students that are new to the district. And it's a half a day, and it's an orientation for those students. We will be communicating through a link on the front of the district's website, the risk stratification for exposures by color code to notify uh, parents, students, and staff members how to avoid unnecessary contact as noted in the plan. As you see on the screen, it is in color and by class and by school. Again, we'll be directing parents to go to that link on the website on the main page so they get that information. We'll also be communicating out to the community an overview of the plan on what will be expected for the start of the school year. Again, it'll be in multiple languages, and it's a quick overview on where we're at with the plan. Also in the communications, we'll be asking parents to update their contact information with schools, and that is very important this school year. The district needs this contact information so buildings can contact families on any updates as we progress through the school year. Again, our learning options and the numbers, as you will see on the screen, as we're um, registering students for the school year, on-site currently is at 2,107. Remote learning is at 430. Blended, which is at 137. And again, blended is for 7th through 12th grades and 6th graders looking at participating in band and orchestra in remote learning. So that's a total currently of 2,674 that have registered for those different op learning options. I'm now going to turn it over to Roxy Schaefer, who will talk about the new remote learning system and how we'll use that in communicating with the district. background when we started meeting this summer some of the feedback we got was that parents indicated that a lot of them got lost last spring um, looking for information in a myriad of places so technology was asked to look into evaluating and selecting a communication tool and then we had our technology committee for the reopening and along with the technology department we spent a few months evaluating those tools so we did a teacher survey for the, um, our tech committee uh, to ask many questions, but three of them were specific about communication. One, how did you communicate to students? How did you communicate to students and families during continuous learning? Our teachers identified 21 different methods used for communication, which indicates our teachers went above and beyond to try to communicate with our families. But again, remember, we were thrown into something, and they used every possible method they could find to communicate with our families. The top three uh, methods, however, were email, phone calls, and texting. I think it says testing, but it should be texting. Um, so what is the best way for parents to communicate back with our teachers, we asked? Again, email, texting, and phone, and then there were 14% four, of the teachers answered other. One other question that I thought was interesting um, that we asked our teachers, what did you struggle with when communicating with parents? Accurate, up-to-date information. When you think about those 21 different applications, if I used an application that was uh, not the norm, I may have the best up-to-date information about the parents in my class, but somebody down the, in the next classroom over that also had those kids may not. We may not have the right, the correct information in Skyward either. Um, we definitely have obviously language barriers. We had trouble with families answering the phones and that's because a lot of the parents are working 
during our school day we, we, our, our teachers were trying to get a hold of them. Our parents weren't there because they were working. Then we asked the parents, the, the select committee did a survey, and we asked the parents, what's the, uh, what method of communication did you find most helpful? And their results, again, the top three, email, texting, and phone calls. And then they all said 31% social media, which Willie and Amanda used quite a bit to communicate with our uh, parents, and then the classroom communication apps. So we looked at several different criteria when trying to decide what we should do if we should do anything to try to help with communication. And a couple of the, the highlights on here, as you can read through them, we think one and two way communication is important. Um, by that we mean if a teacher pushes information out to parents, we need to have them, give them the ability to immediately respond to that same type of communication. But one of the things we heard a lot in the spring when everybody had to go remote, where we were asking our teachers to use their personal cell phones to make phone calls to parents and students. That gave out their personal cell phone information. So that, that was a concern. So we tried to find an application that would mask that or hide that. Uh, so we still would probably have to have our teachers use their personal cell phone, but they didn't have to give that out if I was a high school teacher you know, to 120 different families. Uh, video conferencing is huge because we know that at some point we may go remote again and video conferencing is big for that, so we wanted something that we could uh, integrate easily with um, video conferencing. And the other thing we wanted, we felt was important for technology, was the ability to pre-roster those classes to ease that burden off of the teachers. So we looked at four possible things out of the 21 that we thought might meet the needs. Um, Skylight, which is the current one, and we'll even mention that tonight. That is tied to Skyward, but it is a one-way communication tool. We push information out, but we, um, it gives no ability for the parent to call back or respond back. We saw a demonstration from a teacher at Garfield on class tag that she used a little bit with her kids and loved, and so we watched a demonstration on that. We know many users like Class Dojo, which is a classroom management app as well, and then we saw a demonstration on the mind. Of those on the committee that voted, uh, unanimous selection was the application of the mind. So, what do we get with this? Teachers can call and text without revealing their numbers. That's huge. Um, it allows the user to identify their preferred method of communication. So, I may like email, you may like texting, and somebody else may want that personal phone call. Um, we can we can use this application without having without making the parent or family load an app, which we thought was was nice. There is an app that they can download for better communication or more additional features. But as you all have um, tonight, we have you have joined a class, and Amanda has sent you a message um, that was pre-populated. So you didn't have to do anything as a parent, any extra work, the work was done behind the scenes. Uh, we know that our coaches and our already are using this Remind app considerable amount of time. Um, cross country I think uses it, tennis. We had a principal tell us she set up all her teachers on it for the traditional calling tree. So we no longer have to have a you call me and I'll call you on down the line. Um, this one fell swoop and all our staff is in there. It can be connected um, to Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom, which is big in our districts, our recommended uh, applications. It can be translated with the touch of a button to over 90 languages. Again, that's huge. Our parents, or our teachers showed us over and over in the survey that communication and translation was an issue. So this can do it for them. The administration can use their dashboard uh, to see usage and engagement. And uh, in 19, in 2019 and 20, the school year 2019-20, nearly one million messages went out using the app in mind, using just the free application. Uh, so that is why we're here this evening to ask that you approve uh, the use of purchase of Remind as a district communication tool.
have one question. Janine? Sorry, this is Janine. Uh, did you find any downsides to using the Remind Yeah, I, My kids have used it with the Clinton debate, Mr. Tribal uses it, so um, I'm pretty familiar with it, but did you find any um, downsides that people were not happy with any of it? Um, not to our knowledge. One of the things we, uh, I think probably our upper grades are going to find it, uh, maybe integrate it more easily than maybe the lower grades. Uh, but I don't know that I found anything that I'll look at um, some of the people on the committee, they're, they're shaking their heads no, nothing that was insurmountable. Um, uh, I, back in my brain, no, there was nothing that, it did the things that we, that we identified as the most important. Did you, uh, Thank you, yeah, uh, it's a great app, so I just kind of wondered if there were any downsides to it other than what I've experienced with it. You know, I haven't experienced any of that, but I'm just curious on that. Thank you. It would be new to some individuals that would be a downside. <laughs> Jeffrey, you want to get a little bit closer yep, to the mic? Sorry. Just check to see if Janine and Mark can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I'm can probably you? too far away from that mic, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, if you want to ask your question, I'll try to repeat Yeah, that. I was curious about what the cost of this is going to be, and then also, did you consult... I know there's, did you get a mention of uh, the band app? There's several, there's some that use that one also. It's mm -hmm. called band. Okay, before you answer, um, Janine and Mark, what she was asking was about the cost and then about the band app. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. The cost is approximately $17,000 a year. Okay. Um, the, actual, that's, the application is maybe 15 something and the the additional is the phone piece that we wish to add on to and, mask. And um, how does that compare to the Skylar? I know it's two different. Skylar issues. is about eight thousand dollars a year, so it is much more expensive. Okay. Um, yeah, but it doesn't have near the tools that, that this one does. Okay. Skylar is basically a push information out, and we worked really hard to try to get Skylar to be able to text. Right. And we just couldn't get it to do it. So it's a calling feature only. And the band app, I'm unfamiliar. When we went through and looked at uh, the teacher survey, that didn't come up that, as one of the top ten. I just knew of a few that had used that switch from Remind to oh. band. And then one more question. Did you consult with the college at all to see what they used? Because I talked to a couple teachers there that um, even mentioned which the learning platforms, <laughs> but also communication, that they had maybe some that were free. And if you talk to them at all, I, I did not remind it. Oh, you're I'm sorry. I need to repeat the question. Yes. Sorry. Um, Jennifer was asking about whether or not they had consulted with the college with regard to um, similar apps um, that might not have an expense to them. And then, if I can clarify too, are you talking about the one that the high school marching band users? Well, it's called band, but yeah, but dance team uses it. I have a couple other groups I've. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think it's the same one. Well, the one the band uses is Remind. Oh, so no, it's called Band. Band. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why I want a clarification. Okay. I'm sorry. So Roxy on the college. Uh, no, we didn't. Um, currently, the district is using the free version of Remind. We are using a free version of Class Tag or uh, Class Dojo. Um, there are we are using several free versions, but one of the things I think even the high school was looking at going ahead and paying for it, because there's limitations to the free one, like the size of class. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, even though, uh, yes, there are free ones out there, um, um, we, f we felt that the additional perks of having the paid version of Remind will help the entire district out. Thank you. Sure. And I wasn't doubting your research. <laughs> I just like mm -hmm. wanted to sure. see if that option was out there. Any other questions? Um, I did have one question, especially looking at the screen um, where it shows what the color is for the individual teachers. Um, looking at it this way, people who are red, green, colorblind are going to have no clue what color their kids' class is. Because um, you've got red and green mixed in together, is there a way to maybe change the chart or do something different so someone who's colorblind can see 
what color it is? We could probably add a character or a symbol to that, but it's what we're doing is following what the plan was approved by. So through, hold on. question Madam Chair. Again, we're following what the plan, had, what the board approved on the plan, which was the three different colors, which was red, yellow, and green. So on the website, you will see those three different colors. Now, if we can add a character or symbol or something for those people that are, like you said, are colorblind that can't see that. But again, we were following what the board approved and we put that together um, for the website. Well, and, and I apologize, I'm not criticizing that it, it, the red, yellow, and green makes sense based off of what we're doing, but just looking at this chart, since it's all mixed up, I know my husband couldn't read it, so that's why I was asking the question, so if there's something we, that we could do. And we can, we can look at that and probably add something, and, we'll, and we can communicate that with our parents, but again, we're following what the plan mm -hmm. says, and Thank you. Okay, so are there any other questions? Um, so it's my understanding that, um, did you want action on this part now or later? So, Checking, but I do believe it will be possible to add, like the words red, yellow, and green with those classrooms. Um, but we'll we'll work with the people with our web page on that. Um, the uh, we are asking the board to approve this tonight. Um, we have submitted the cost for this in our Spark funding request. We won't know the answer to that until probably later this week. But we, as a backup plan also have room to pay for it with our CARES dollars if need be. And I want to add one more little clarification in here. So this will give us some consistency across the district. So we will use this with all of our district and building level communications. Um, anything that's COVID related from the classrooms, we will also require that teachers use that. But if teachers have another app like Dojo or ClassTag that they really want to use to, to do their other kind of classroom communications. I mean, I think those pieces bring something else to the table that Remind doesn't do. There's nothing that would prohibit the teacher from continuing to use their class dojo for their um, routine communications with um, families. Um, so uh, yes, we are asking for action tonight if possible. Dr. Carlin, can I ask you a quick question going with that? Um, so, for example, when we were talking about the color code system for classrooms, will that also be transmitted via Remind? Because it was said it was, it was going to go on the main website, but it will also go via Remind? Correct. So if, if, if there was a change in status, like a classroom went yellow, then Remind would be used to, to tell parents there's been a change to your child's classroom status. Okay. And but then they, but they could go in at any time and look on their own, but Remind would be used to, to alert them that there has been a change. Okay, great, thanks. And I, I have a question. Will we still be getting Sky Alert, or will we get rid of that? Will this replace it? This will ultimately, assuming that it goes well, I think we'll ultimately replace Sky Alert, but we probably will have a duplicate cost for a, for a period of time here. Janine and Mark, did you catch that, all of that, or understand what the questions were based off the answer? Thank you. And so I entertain a motion to approve the communications plan as presented. So moved. Moved by Dr. Hanion, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alex. Any discussion? Um, I want to apologize. I, I'm not, 
not trying to criticize the red, yellow, green, just when I saw it in that particular manner, I just thought that's when it hit me, this could be an issue, so I apologize. I wasn't trying to be critical. Um, anything else? Stephanie, do you want to call the roll? Laura? Aye. Dr. Hannigan? Aye. Dana? Aye. Janine? Aye. Mark? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Alex? Aye. Thank you very much. The motion passed. Moving into unfinished business, Executive Order 20-59. Um, Dr. Carlin, did you want to kind of give a recap?